Welcome back to P3. Today we're looking at integrating f of ax plus b. Now this is not much more of a step up from the last video uh, as I did do a couple of questions like this in the last video. So while I'll keep it fairly short today I will do a couple of key integrations for this part of the unit. So integrated in sine, so remember that sine differentiates the cos, it integrates to negative cos. So that's where I'm starting, I'm integrating this, I'm getting negative cos 3x minus 1. Now when I differentiate, I multiply by this part differentiated. So when I integrate, I need to divide by that. So this part differentiates to 3, I need to divide by 3, so it's the same as multiplying by 1 over 3. So my final answer is minus a third cos 3x minus 1. And what you should always do is you should always just double check. You know, if I differentiate this, cos will differentiate to negative sign. So the sign will change. Perfect. And then I will multiply by this differentiated. So 3 times a third will be back to 1. So it's worth doing that just to double check. Then finally, I just need to add in my constant as we have no limits. Again, nice straightforward one. So e to the 5x plus 3, that part is going to stay the same. Now remember, when you differentiate, you would multiply by this differentiated. So multiply by 5, which means I need to divide by 5, or the same as multiplying by 1 over 5. Uh, actually, almost forgetting my plus C there. Now, with this one, what you can think of is that 1 over 2x plus 1, well, this is the same as 2x plus 1 to the minus 1. And remember, when that happens, if you added... 1 to the power here you would get 0 and it would disappear so you know when that happens it's going to be a log so this one's going to be a log 2x plus 1 now I also need to make sure that normally differentiating you multiply by this differentiated so don't forget now we have to divide by that so 2x plus 1 will be 2 so we're dividing by 2 so we got a half ln 2x plus 1 and don't forget my plus c and finally we've got one in a power so approaching this first thing i want to do is take my bracket and raise it to the new power so if i increase something and then i would also have to divide by that new power so you think of the rules when you are integrating say x to the power 4 when you integrate that it becomes x to the power 5 and you divide by 5 okay and it's the same thing here then all that's left to do is multiply or divide is a more accurate one by the differential of this which is 4 so you're going to multiply by 1 over 4 that then leaves me 1 over 24, 4x to the minus 3 to the power 6. And there I have it. It was worth double checking this, so differentiating this, I would muff, multiply by 6. So let's do it. If I imagined this was my thing, differentiating and get 1 over 24, 4x minus 3 to the power 5. I would have multiplied by 6, so I'll turn that to a 6. And then I also need to multiply by the inside of this differentiated, which is 4. That gives you 24 over 24, so it's 4x minus 3 to the power 5, which is what I started with. Just get rid of that. Another way to look at these is if you are unsure and your differentiating is a lot better than you're integrating, 
which it is for a lot of people, you can approach this by doing a rough integration. So a rough integration would be just add one to the power, then do your differentiation. So that's six, four X minus three to the power five, multiplied by the inside differentiated. And what you can see is when you do this rough differentiation, you can see that it's almost the same as what I started with. It's just that it's 24 times bigger. So to get rid of that 24, you would then have to divide by 24. So it's the same as the start, which means if you're thinking of each step or better still just to jump straight to the top and divide that by 24. And there's your answer. The same as what we got over here. So there is a few ways of approaching these.